Welcome to the series where I test out money making methods from the OSRS wiki. Feel free to leave suggestions on which money maker you'd like to see next. And also, if you didn't already know, I have a nice playlist that I've created that has all of the previous money makers that I've already tried. So go ahead and check it out if you haven't already. With that being said, let's get into the video. So for today's video, I thought we'd go ahead and reach far back to four months ago and do skeletal wyverns. Now I'm not really sure why this took me so long to make. This is one of the more popular AFK money makers, kind of like gargoyles or rune dragons. There are quite a bit of requirements, but once you get them, this can be a very decent money maker uh, and you don't really need high levels to do it. So yeah. Now you can either kill them with range or with melee. For this video, I will be using melee just because I think it's possibly the best route. I was reading the wiki earlier and it did say that you would make more money killing them with melee. And I think it's just because you don't have to worry about spending money on supplies like bolts. So that might play a pretty big factor here. It'll also be very helpful to use any dragon bane weapons that you may have, such as the dragon hunter crossbow for range and the dragon hunter lance for melee. And like I said, since we are going the melee route, we will be using the lance as shown here. We will also be using the best in slot gear that I have available to me, which is full bandos, the ferocious gloves, the primordial boots, the berserker ring imbued, the dragonfire shield, since the wyverns do have sort of a dragonfire attack, the amulet of torture with an ornament kit. You don't need the ornament kit, but um, with the new death mechanics, uh, ornament kits actually do have a pretty nice ability which is if you have an ornament kit on a item you won't lose it on death and you won't have to pay money for it so that's pretty cool i also have the max cape of course and the nate's not face guard and the rod is blessing four for the ammo slot and then the inventory i just have the divine super combat with five prayer potions some monkfish my fire cape switch for the best in slot that i have i know i need the inferno someday we'll get it uh, I have the rune pouch for some alks, and then I have the herb sack for the herbs that is dropped from these wyverns. Now, I know this gear is very expensive and not everyone has access to it. If you go over to the wiki and look up skeletal wyvern strategies, they have a nice table that shows you the different gear setups that you can use depending on your budget. So go over there and check it out. But for this video, we are testing out what it's like to kill these wyverns with a max account and max stats. As for getting there, I will be using the fairy ring in my house, which is, I believe it's AIQ is the uh, code. You use that, take it here, head north, go down the ladder, and then head north once again. So the reason I'm able to use the fairy ring without any staffs is because I have an elite diary done. I believe it's the Lumbridge and Drano diary. So if you don't have that done, you will need a Draman staff or a Lunar staff to use the fairy rings as well as the quest to have access to them in the first place. And as you can see, it is a pretty far run to get to this area, so I will be going for max amount of kills before having to telly, which means I will be burying a lot of the bones that I get, and I'll just stay here until I'm out of food and prayer potions. Now this will be my first time killing these skeletal wyverns off task. Normally I kill them upstairs, there's a lot grouped together and there's less people there, since you do have to be on a slayer task to kill them. So for this video, we'll have to be on the bottom floor and there are some safe spots, which is why range is such a popular method here. A lot of people opt to go for range because they don't have to worry about taking damage from the wyverns. They can just safe spot them. But again, I thought melee would be best. I think we'll get more kills that way and we also won't have to worry about safe spotting them. Now, as far as drops go, the wyverns do drop a large amount of different things some of them worth a good amount some of them not so much but they also drop some prayer potions and some lobsters which is really nice because it does extend your trips here now this can be a little annoying at first because you have to be juggling your food and your prayer potions and whatnot but for the most part it is a welcome surprise and i'm happy every time i see it now these skeletal wyverns do drop a lot of alcables a lot of rune items and even some dragon items like the dragon plate legs and the dragon plate skirt that are a 1 in 512 drop rate. They also drop the granite legs, which is also a 512 drop rate, so 
pretty rare to get it, but I mean, if you're farming these for multiple hours at a time, then you'll definitely see them here. The most rare drop here, however, is the Draconic Visage. Yes, you can actually receive one of those at a 1 in 10,000 drop rate. So that one is extremely rare, but if you do happen to get it, it's pretty nice to see. It's too bad it's not worth as much as it used to be. Right now it's currently at around 4.6 mil, so nothing too crazy, but I mean, it's still a nice item to get if you do happen to get it and get lucky. Now me currently, I've never gotten a Draconic Visage from any Skeletal Wyverns or regular Chromatic Dragons or Metal Dragons. The only Visages that I have gotten have been from Vorkath. I believe I've gotten one Draconic Visage from Vorkath and two Draconic Visages from the King Black Dragon. Of course, the drop rate is a lot lower to get it from a boss. So, I mean, I can only imagine the excitement you must feel to get it from a monster that has a 1 in 10,000 drop rate of dropping it. Especially when this item was first released. I mean, being one of the first people to get it from a dragon must have been a very crazy feeling. Now, as far as the strategy on how I killed these, you want to make sure that you set your attack options if you are using the lance to slash or crush, not stab. And the reason for this is because they actually have a higher stab defense as opposed to slash and crush. Their stab defense is actually the same amount as their range defense, but still range is a pretty good option here, so don't let it discourage you from using it. Now as for what to pray, I was going to pray magic since my magic defense is the lowest by far, but when I looked at the wiki it said that they only have ranged and melee attacks. So I prayed ranged because it said that that was the prayer to use, I don't know if it was based on a range setup or a melee setup, but I prayed that just because it said that that's where you take the bulk of the damage. So even though I had a very high range defense, I still prayed range, but who knows? Praying melee might be better, praying mage might be better, I don't know. It seemed to work out well for me though. Now, I'm not sure if this is still a thing, but uh, I'd say at least a year ago, there was a CC that would kind of stay around here and they would buy your supplies off of you. Or not your supplies, but they'd buy the loot that you got here for, you know, of course, under the GE value. But it allowed you to stay here for longer trips so I mean it might be worth looking into if you do plan on staying here for a long period of time but since we were only doing the one hour I didn't use that service. I was also debating whether I should bring my Ceredome and God Sword to heal and get prayer off of these wyverns but in the end I decided not to because I didn't feel like running the chance of getting hit by the icy breath without the dragonfire shield on and taking loads of damage so I decided not to bring it. But I do remember back in the day I used to bring a dragon dagger for the spec and that seemed to work fine since you could of course spec with that and still have the shield on so might be worth bringing. But that pretty much wraps up the one hour of killing the skeletal wyverns as you can see this is all the loot that we got. A great variety of items here and if we do the price check it's around 1.5 mil. So this was a big surprise. I did not expect to get this much money from one hour, but again, we are rocking the best year and well, we have some pretty high stats too. So yeah. Now, like I say with all of my videos, try to get the best amount of money you can for all of the loot. Don't just throw it in there for under market price like I did. Just for the sake of the video, I was trying to sell everything as quickly as possible. So we did miss out on a little bit of money, but we still have a nice amount here. It's still around 1.5 mil. We missed out on about, I'd say like 40k or so, so it's not that big of a deal. But if you are farming this place for a long period of time, make sure you put the items in there for at least market price and possibly a little bit over. Now we can go ahead and see how much money we made from this one hour. So we subtract the cost of supplies, which was 225,684 GP from the total amount of money that we made, which was 1,504,482 GP, we get a grand total profit of 1,278,798 GP, which again is very crazy to me. I did not expect to make this amount of money. Of course, I didn't expect to kill as many as I did in this one hour. We managed to kill, I believe, 92 at the end of this, so quite a lot. And here's a look at the XP that we got. 
the magic is from the alking and the prayer is from the bones that we buried and then this is also a look at the total loot that we got if we were to pick up every single drop from the skeletal wyverns which is valued at around 1.7 mil so that's a pretty decent amount as always, I just want to say thanks for checking out the video, and if you enjoyed it, please consider giving it a thumbs up and possibly a subscription. And as always, I will catch you guys in the next episode.